You're welcome back to News File. This is your most authoritative news analysis show. And here on News File, we put Ghana Fest. The show is coming to you live from your multi TV uh, studios. This is your Joy News channel. It is live on Joy 99.7 FM on radio in Kumasi on Love FM and over a dozen affiliate radio stations across the country. Also elsewhere in the world, you can listen to us on Multi TV World slash streams. You can watch us there and listen to us on. Uh, myjoyonline.com or if you ha also uh, have access to your tuning uh, app then you can listen in very clear sound subsequently the show is available on your ABN TV Sky Channel 235 in the UK and elsewhere in Europe thank you very much so um, the floods came and fire also mixed with the flood uh, Elton John Brobe was at the scene of the development and brought us this report. So we want to do a quick recap of what has happened. Let's listen to the report as filed by Elton John Brobe of Joy FM. We, we've been here for over an hour now and th th there appears to be no end in sight as far as this fire is concerned. Uh, as you can see from the background, the fire is still raging. Uh, already it's consumed three buildings, three story buildings. and the threats it is posing to the GCB tower cannot be ruled out, but we've been told by personnel of the Ghana Fire Service that they've been able to protect the GCB uh, tower from being consumed by this particular raging fire. Now, what they've concentrated their action on is trying to rescue people we are told who are trapped in some of the buildings uh, uh, close to where uh, this fire can be seen. I must say that the personnel of the Ghana Fire Service are doing a great job uh, to bring the, 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 the situation under control. What they are doing is now that they are not fighting the fire because it will be difficult at this stage to do so. That's what I've been told by one of them. So w what they are doing is to try and protect the other buildings that are so close to where the fire is so that it doesn't spread to, to those parts. So what they've done uh, to ensure that it doesn't spread to, that, uh, to, 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 to those buildings, including the GCV tower, is unknown for now. One person has been rescued from a building across the street. The person looks quite healthy and okay. But we have been told that many more people are trapped in some of the buildings here. And what they are doing is that they are trying to bring them out to ensure that they, 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 they are also safe from the fire. This, I'm sure, is going to take a long time. As you can see, the water level is also rising by the minute. Even as this fire is raging and it's raining, there's no end in sight so when the fire will be brought under control. But we'll be here till everything comes down. We'll be here till they're able to bring the fire under control. We'll be here till they're able to rescue every person who needs help from some of the buildings. We're still bringing you pictures and messages from uh, the floods and also the fire at Circle here in Accra. Now, uh, Emily had some report. Let's li listen and watch that one too. We are here at the Youngsters Primary and JHS School where the rain has, in fact, caused a lot of havoc. Students cannot study. They are outside. They don't know what to do. We are here to speak with Wallace Atie, who is a JHS3 uh, student. Wallace, what can you tell us of what happened yesterday and today? When I came to school today on the road, people were telling me, oh, my school is broken. It has been broken down. Maybe almost 90% of the school is broken. So we should come to school next time, not this time. Have you been to your classroom? Oh, yes, I've been to my What did you see? The, the water level last for yesterday is visible in the classroom. It's almost maybe half of the board. And the board is the topmost part of the class. So if it's at the top of the board, you can see then the, the rain was really heavy. Has it affected the chairs, the blackboards, the tables, your books, anything else that has been uh, distracted? Oh, many of the books, plenty of people's books are, have even been removed, torn, they are wet. The chairs have been broken, as you can see, even we are trying to dispose of the ones which cannot be fixed. You mean everything is destroyed? No, not everything. You see, some of the, the, the classes that are closer to the gutter are the ones that are actually broken, but the ones which are in front, I'm not sure they are broken. So what have the authorities told you as of now? What can you do? Oh, as of now, they are telling us to come back Monday for 
to, for any, if there's any improvement, and they tell us if we are to... Are any of you helping to put their place in shape? Yes, we are helping, we are bringing, if there are chairs we have to dispose of, we are disposing them off and... When are you writing your final exams? 15th of June. Israel Lai was also uh, in the field and he spoke to some survivors. Tell me exactly where you were standing. Uh -huh. So from, you mean from this side? Mm -hmm. You can't show exactly where it's at. And what was the uh, rice seller here doing? Plastic chair. As you can see, there's some rice right down here. So this rice was apparently being cooked. And here I can see some baked beans. You saw the fire coming mm -hmm. and the water was at level your level. And so how were the people running? They, they couldn't run. run. So this wall was not broken. You stood on the wall, went on top of the boutique. Yeah, container no. This container. Ah, container no. Okay. This house. Uh, the people in the building were screaming. Were there a lot of people inside? Any part is a four. Four? No, inside is a four. But I don't know what the land is going to do. But I don't know what the land is going to do. So about how many people were here? I don't know what the land is going to do. I don't know what the land is going to do. I don't know what the land is going to do. But inside is going to do. But inside is going to do. You managed to climb it. And whilst you were climbing it, you were saying Jesus. Jesus, top. You're saying that when you drop from the tree into the water, was there fire on the water? The fire was running on top of the water. Was on top of the water but it wasn't as if the fire was burning on top of the water. It ran over it. It ran over it. Let's take another eyewitness account of the development. And we're just trying to, you know, take all of us back to what has happened so far. And we will also bring you a report of what is happening right now as we speak new discoveries of uh, reported death as a result of the floods and um, what uh, authorities are also uh, doing as far as this is concerned. For those of you who have the benefit of the television and you're seeing the photographs, 
um, the caution is that, and and also the 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 plea is that um, forgive us, but some of the pictures are not exactly you know good for a morning like this. We have done our best to cut out even the portions that are actually extremely uh, terrible. But uh, let's l hear this eyewitness account. <laughs> All of them are dead. We saw fire from behind the filling station. The flood brought up the fuel from the ground. Someone put on a generator and it blew up and the fire came across from there. Everyone here is dead. All those seated in their vehicles are dead. The manager was at home, but all the sales girls here are dead. Some did not come to work, but those here are dead. those who attempted to escape are all dead. Supermarket, one and old Danny, old Danny for supermarket inside, and I shall know. Slim, no, oh, yes, Slim, Taliza. Uh, that's an account by an, eye an eyewitness who was right there and you saw him standing right in the middle of the wreckage, the, the rubble. Uh, what was left of the filling station there, everywhere burnt, and um, the rest that you don't want to describe. And we also attempted to, you know, blare some of them, uh, the stuff that you saw in the background. Well, and then the morning came, and the president, John Dramani Mahama, uh, did a tour of the place. And this is what he saw for himself and what he had to say. Accra, by virtue of its geographical location, is prone to flooding. But aside from that, our own human activity makes these floods worse. Littering in the drains and all that make it difficult for the water that is coming from the mountains. Most of the streams that go through Accra take their source from the mountains. And so people building in waterways, littering the drains, make it difficult for the flood water that comes from the mountains to reach the sea. And so we've created a human intervention between the source of the rivers and the sea, where they are headed. A lot of people have lost their lives. I'm very, I'm at a loss of words to express how I feel. Many of them through the flood, and then very many of them through the fire incident that took place here as a result of the explosion that took place in the filling station located right here. Yesterday the emergency services including the military, the police, the fire service were all called out to come and help. They managed to rescue quite a large number of people but unfortunately a large number of people lost their lives. I want to take the opportunity to commend the security services for their diligence. Um, throughout yesterday night, many of them have not had any sleep. We were closely monitoring what was happening. 
and then also to express my condolences to the several who have lost relatives and the victims of the flood. We'll have to take some measures to be able to avoid this happening in the future. And often when these measures are drastic, you have a lot of sympathy and pressure not to take those measures. But I think that the time has come, you know, for us to remove houses out of waterways. And the public should understand that it is necessary to save everybody else. I mean, this loss of life is catastrophic, almost unprecedented. And so um, we'll leave the city authorities and the emergency services to continue to do their work. But we must sit and strategize to make sure that this doesn't happen again. We shouldn't continue to be like the vulture who says he would roof his house when the rain stops. Year in, year out, this continues to happen. And until we attack it scientifically and strategically, we'll continue to have these problems. And that was President John Mahama, and you can tell, you are very familiar with him. You could tell that he was obviously trying to contain what he was uh, feeling inside. Um, very obviously, weeping within and making sure that he contained himself that it didn't show on that day. Now, what shall we do beyond that? I think that's the most critical question. It is the reason the leaders are voted into office, and he says that we shouldn't continue this with a vulture attitude. Uh, we return to it every year. It's become a ritual. It's as though every year expect that this will come, and when it does come, some of you will die anyway, and then it happens. Very terrible. Um, Nanado Danko Akofuado, the opposition leader, also was there to see things for himself. And these gentlemen must be seeing this, not for the first time, they, they certainly must be seeing this for the umpteenth time in their life. But let's hear what he had to say. It was an explosion that was caused by what? I don't know. You don't know yet? Some are just speculating. I see. Some are also attributing it to the lightning. Some are also attributing it to a, a, a kiosk behind that of fire as a result of the lightning. But you can't really tell what really about the fire. You can't really tell. And so the whole area. So what, 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 there were people here? There were people here. Sheltering from the rain? Yes. And then the oh. oh, 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 oh. And so the, terrible. the bodies are in the truck ahead of the ambulance. Oh, we have to go and have a look. Yeah. Okay. My goodness. You will, you will, you will. Everybody has to very, very And very for all of us, a really major tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see as far as three blocks away. We have to just express our, our condolence to all those who have mm. lost their lives out mm. of this. The properties we can deal with later, but the lives of those who have been affected. And it's not it's just a big, about big, big, big bad day in Accra history. Really. It's not just the fire that took life. The rain also took life. But well, the time has come for us to do something about this city and flood yeah. and rain. Yeah. Yeah. We can't. Year after year, we have yeah. problems about whenever. Yeah, yeah. The time has come. Really. It's just too bad. Just too bad. Let's go and have a look at where the people yeah. are. Yeah. Excuse, excuse us. So that was Nana Akufuado, who is the presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party, and he was being briefed uh, about the situation. And you heard him repeat the very same words that the president used, that this recurs every year and it must not continue. Well, let's see what they will do, both do. Um, former President Rawlings was also there. As for former President Rawlings, I, I can be certain that he's seen this for, for how many years? <laughs> let's, let's hear what he had to say.
All right, uh, we're trying to get the Rollins uh, footage uh, sorted, and we'll play that to you, and uh, you hear what uh, President Rollins also had to say about it. Now, uh, let's quickly hear what the Education Minister, uh, Jane Nana Opoku Adjuman, had to say. And of, more importantly, she's got a caution for uh, parents and guardians about how to get your children to school these days, particularly now that the meteorological services is beginning to tell us more, to expect more of these uh, rains. Uh, the rainfall, especially in Accra and its environments, and how they can impact school activity and the lives of children. Um, humbly requesting that teachers keep an eye on the children who are in school already. Some of these kids leave home very early. And so they may be in the school environment, and we want an adult to keep an eye on them, to give them some safety tips, and to guide them in getting home. Uh, we are also requesting that those who are home already, you know, that they skip school for the day. We'll monitor the situation as the day wears on, and if by close of day is necessary, we'll come with another announcement so that family and children know how to plan their day tomorrow. Okay. Should mm -hmm. should parents consider going to pick up their kids now? If they can, we'll be very happy if they can do that. In fact, we'll really, really urge them. But there are lots of kids who will have to walk home, you see, and we are very interested in them also. How do they navigate that process at a time like this? It's very important for us. Search and rescue operations will continue till the weekend, Sunday. On Monday, we will observe three days of national mourning for the victims of the fire disaster and the flooding. Flags will fly at half-mast from Monday for three days. Drastic steps are necessary here if we are to permanently address this perennial problem. We will intensify our efforts to expand and modernize our drainage system. In this endeavor, I request your understanding and the cooperation of Ghanaians to set right what has been wrong with our country for far too long. We cannot continue to allow a situation where the convenience of a few undermines the safety of many. Government has allocated an amount of 50 million cities to cover relief and humanitarian operations, repair of damaged public infrastructure and the silting and clearing of water waste. This exercise would affect other towns that would find themselves in other situations in other parts of the country. Our current priority now is to save lives and prevent any further suffering of our people. From the weather warnings announced by the Ghana Meteorological Agency, we can expect more rains over an expended, extended period of time, especially within the next two weeks. It requires proper emergency services planning to ensure that any challenges that occur are effectively tackled. Accordingly, the National Disaster Management Organization and the Ghana Armed Forces will be providing and setting up emergency shelter zones within the affected areas to provide refuge for persons displayed, displaced by the flooding. I appeal also to our churches and mosques to make their premises and facilities available to provide any additional shelter to any displaced persons in their communities. Fellow Ghanaians, as we mourn the deceased today and the days ahead, let us work together as one team and one nation united in grief but determined not to ever have a repeat of such a national disaster. Right, um, and that was supposed to be the very final uh, sound that I wanted to share with you. But um, we now can bring you what uh, President Jerry Rawlings had to say about the situation. Many areas across the city were flooded. Even some of our newly constructed streets were not spared the flooding. The floods and the havoc they wreaked were the best reminder of the challenges cities face in the drive to modernity and why modernization, though it requires leadership planning 
a sense of direction and boldness is also about the mindset and education of a people, especially on appropriate sanitation practices and habits. Technological advancement is definitely the way to go in ensuring that our cities stay abreast with the challenges of population increases with the attendant increase in vehicle ownership. Production of waste material and a rise in pollution. We are racing against time as we confront these challenges, ladies and gentlemen.